to the Ross Patterson Revolution. Brought to you by GhostBed.com. Yes, James. Yes. Oh, I need to stretch her on out today, James. I need to stretch her on out. You know why? Why? This is Super Bowl Sunday. Happiest day for me. Happiest day for you. What? Yeah. It was our last episode before the Super Bowl. Okay. So. Before the chili cook-off. Right. Is there something else? Happiest day for me. Happiest day for you. Right. It's the last football game of the year. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I feel like Jessica Simpson. And, until the end of August. You know that, right? Like, you're looking at, shit, seven and a half months. You've already gotten nicer. Uh, have it's I? weird. Yeah. It starts about, yeah, it starts about like a month before Super Bowl. Man. Where you uh, like get nicer, you're more like, again, you're like Jessica Simpson when she stops drinking. Okay. You're like, uh, you're like clear again. Yeah, 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 yeah. Singing Amazing yeah. Grace, acapella on Today Show, stuff like that. <laughs> Was she fucked up or what during that interview? Oof. I think she definitely kept the pills going, which pills. is what I would do. Pills. If yeah. I quit drinking, I would still need a little. Yeah, a little. Uh, <laughs> um, it seemed like Valium, you know. It was va- it was like Valium or like some kind of nothing other heavy prescribed. Eh, nothing heavy. It was like she was taking fucking o- oxys. I don't think it was heavy, but it was definitely something. There was um, a some the the words weren't coming out as right, and when you drop into Amazing Grace acapella in front of Hoda, in reference to your sobriety mm-hmm. there's something else do you know what i mean yeah yeah, yeah there's yeah, yeah, something yeah. else going on it was cringy it was extra and as we all know i'm not here for it but what we are here for mm-hmm. is your super bowl and your super your bowl. attitude <laughs> just been so much nicer uh, it's not true it's it not is true. true there's a lot of a lot of pressure on the old traps are you invalidating my feelings? No, it's not. Okay, I'm not, we've I'm talked not doing about that. this. I'm not doing that. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> Fuck you. Um, we no. don't talk like that. We don't talk about that. Uh, no, but it's, it's your chili cook-off, so it's your Super Bowl as well. Mm-hmm. And I'm rooting for you. Thank you. And I'm also rooting for me. Obviously, I'm drinking bro sports. Uh, before the year started, I picked the Chiefs to win it all. Yes. A lot of money riding on this, Javes. And lo and behold, who's going to the Super Bowl? Chiefs. Brad Pitt. So yep. what? Uh huh. Chiefs. But Brad Pitt will probably be there, right? I would imagine. Which is he's what in, I'm here he's for. He's in full Oscar mode. Like he wants it. He's got a mean on for it. Yeah, but that would really humanize him, wouldn't it? What do you mean? If you just got a a, a you know, a shot of him in a in a booth. You will. In a suite. You will. With the hat on. Ah, uh, you're going to get it, Jace. Yeah. So. You're going to get it. I'm excited for the Super Bowl as well. Yeah. B. Pitt still doing Gosh. it, isn't he? So he gets on. He was uh, at a red carpet uh, for those not familiar with the Brad Pitt chief story. He's a, I think he's a Missouri guy. Um, so. Yeah. He's from there. And mm-hmm. uh, Chiefs fan amped about the game. When you're going hard for these oscar campaigns and let's i'm gonna be totally dead honest with you it is a it's the same as a political campaign so you've got to go to all the events go to all the parties go to the Mm -hmm. biggest things if he gets seen at the super bowl and there's a huge applause for him like oh yeah it's gonna be 115 120 Mm -hmm. million people watching in Mm -hmm. america Mm -hmm. it's a big deal Mm -hmm. they're already starting to drop some commercials i just saw post malone's this morning uh he did two for uh bud light seltzer Okay. Um, that are pretty good. Mm-hmm. Uh, stoked about Posty. Uh, but, but people are, are really, really going for it uh, Oscar-wise right now. Oh, yeah. And uh, you're, you know, what, a week away? From the Oscars? Yeah, what is it, the ninth? I, guess I think it's so. the weekend, weekend after the Super Bowl. Yeah. 
Um, right now, I can tell tell you just from what I've watched and the campaigns that you know of my insider sites online. Like, I think three of them are already locked up. Um, Joaquin Phoenix. Joaquin. Yep. Uh, B Pitt. And that's purely on his <clears throat> on his talent. But he, uh, he's lost before because he wouldn't do, wouldn't do the press. circuit. Like, yeah, for example, do, like yeah. her. Do you remember her? He was so fucking good in it's her. It's great. It's great in her. But he was a little asshole. Yeah. He was in his stuff then. Uh, walk the line, same thing. He didn't want to do any Same thing. He didn't want to do any of this shit. He was an asshole and he lost, but he was the best person that year. Oh, yeah. So I think he's learned a little bit. He's definitely landing the plane. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's, every speech gets better. He's really doing it. Yeah, yeah. Does it make me sad? A little bit. Uh, Happy for him. Uh, sad for like what was, which was like this guy that just did the fucking, did the work for the work. Fuck you, get out of my face. You know what I mean? Yeah. I kind of, I don't think there's any more of that. Like you can't do that. I'm telling you. A, you A won't get hired. You won't get, and you won't get anything. Right. Because those days are over unfortunately they are um and it's one of those things where with with joaquin i I think it's just the moment and it's too big of a stamp on your career yeah of like hey man you've got to go for this because whatever happens for the next 40 50 years of your life right Mm -hmm. you will always be an oscar winner forever it was a big deal for me with the new york times bestseller list thing Mm -hmm. like no matter what that stamp is on my name forever and it's a big deal, man. A- after it, you kind of relax and breathe a little bit. And I think for him personally, mm-hmm. knowing that he has an Oscar, then he can go back to doing fucking weird shit, not caring, whatever. Right. Like He'll always have that, and it doesn't matter after that. So who'd you say, Joaquin, Brad? Brad Pitt and Laura Dern. I think she's got that one sewn up as well. Yeah, she's just in too many. I mean, she's just, it's a dern well, Ever well. since... Well, since Big Little Lies, and yeah. then she's been in everything and been amazing in everything. She's really found her, like, this character. And it's the lawyer, right? And it's the girl from Big Little Lies, that character. Yeah. That is her winning combination. Yeah. So good. Um, I think uh, 1917's got it locked up for Picture of the Year. Sure. Weirdly. So I'll, I'll, go, I'll go four Zs right now. but um, And this is just simply based on... What is happening on these campaigns and, uh, and, and the circuits and all this stuff. And who you're seeing a lot of. Yeah. Brad Pitt's working it. Oh, Laura yeah. Dern's working it. Yeah. Um, Charlize is not going to get anything. No. Uh-huh. They'll take pictures of her because she just photographs amazing. Yeah. But um, she's not going to get anything. No. And I don't think Todd Phillips is going to get anything. He no, is it'll really, probably be, it'll he's probably really be fucking s- up in these streets. Sam Mendes. Um, to be honest with you, have you heard him fucking up? Yeah, but I don't. I, Tom I don't Phillips think, is fucking up in these I don't think he gives streets. a shit about an Oscar, though. Well, good because he's not going to fucking get it. Yeah, I don't think he cares. He is um, not making friends. I don't think he cares anywhere. That's me. Uh, Chili wise, Sunday. Are you going to win? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Um, my um, prediction: Super Bowl Chiefs. I'm going to win. Okay. I feel confident about that. Yeah. I feel good. I think I'm gonna be. I think honestly, I'm going to be neck and neck with Nick. Um, he's getting back late the night before, uh, so he's already setting up his excuses. Sure. He's already like getting in my ear of like, uh, "Hey, you know, I don't know." So I'm not sure. Okay. Um, but branding, I've already talked to him about branding. Got to name it. I've gotten a couple names. You have. What are your names so far? Uh, short and sassy. That uh, submissions. Submissions. Not okay. that it, I'm All just right. Right. shouting out submissions. Not sure what I'm gonna use. Sure. I love a Dahmer chili, although I think in our neighborhood it's just a little it's bit not gonna different. Play. Not gonna play. No, I'm not gonna play at not a gonna uh, family play. neighborhood party. Uh uh-uh. uh. Um. So I don't know. Do you have any ideas? Yes, I think you've got to go something football related. Okay, just based on Lom- last year, you said Lombardi. Lombardi chili won because, yeah. and I've said this before, but because it was the only one with a name. Yeah. And people could be like, oh, when you're just like drinking a little bit and then they finally do, you know, write down whatever yours is, you're just going to think of that name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Lombardi Chili, he'll probably do the same one again. I'd go something Chiefs, Chiefs Chili, the, the dirty, 
dirty chiefs chili something yeah, like that. Yeah, but what if they aren't fans? What if they aren't chiefs fans, well, you know? Well, so so here's the deal about these then two teams. Then I don't want to lose that. Right. It, demo. Here's the here's the the deal with the two teams in the Super Bowl this year like they don't travel and it, it sounds weird at first. We're like, "All right, cool." The people who live in Kansas City live mm. there forever. Um and they're diehards forever and they live around there. They're not traveling all over the country or getting displaced from different cities. Like Brad Pitt. Uh, there's one. Yes. Oh, and he's the only one? Yeah, pretty much. I haven't seen anybody else who's like, hey, Chiefs, like celebrity-wise. I'm a Chiefs wise. fan. I remember the same, because the same thing happened with the Kansas City Royals a couple years ago in the World Series. And there was like t- two Royals fans. It was Paul Rudd <laughs> and, uh, God, was it, it might have been uh, Mad Men, who's the... Oh, ham. John ham, maybe. Um, yeah, that sounds right. That was about it. And you're like, yeah, it's Kansas City. Like, a lot of people stay there and mm-hmm. never leave. Um, I know that sounds strange. Sa- same with San Francisco. Yeah. Um, San Francisco people believe that San Francisco is the greatest city there is, and they will live through people shitting in the streets, pissing yeah. down the driveways, homeless people. Like, they'll live through it because they're like, it's San Francisco. We can't leave San Francisco. And there was a time in San Francisco where, yes, it was beautiful and it was amazing. Mm. Time is not now, but no. um, people refuse to leave there. Uh, I have relatives that uh, refuse to, to not live there, no matter how high the it's rent has the gotten. the housing prices are still so high that nobody, I by know. the way, no one can leave no. unless you're renting, I, which yeah. pretty much everyone is, huh? I mean, I don't know. It just feels like you're like, wait, if my rent is this high, this place must be nice, right? And you're just like brainwashed <laughs> into being like, it'll come back, right? I mean, I'm paying five thousand dollars for a closet. Sarah and Josh are there now, you know, and it's two oh, of our best right. seasons. But like, you know, I don't know. Whenever they're walking around and doing videos, it looks great. Well, they never they video the in, shit. But he told me he was just like, hey man. But they may be I in like Alameda or like no, but he's Walnut like, dude, Creek. Or well, they are now. But before he was like, dude, I see people with needles hanging out of their arms oh, yeah. every fucking day there on the streets, and I'm like, Jesus Christ. And he goes, it's bad, man. Um, But that being said, those two fan bases, like they're not traveling around. Whereas, so for for example, we're in North Carolina, right? If it was the Carolina Panthers or the Atlanta Falcons Mm -hmm. or Tampa Bay Buccaneers or somebody like that, we're at least in the region of that where it's just like, all right, cool, man. There'll be some fans there from that. We're nowhere near either of these cities. Um. Therefore, I would be really, really shocked if there was somebody there who was just like, I'm a diehard Chiefs fan. Yeah. And it's not a team that transcends either, like either of these teams where you're like, oh, man, I grew up with them, and they were amazing. Both of these teams got good now. Um, the last time the 49ers were good was, shit, 90s? I mean, yeah, a while ago. Chiefs, I, I, I don't know if they've ever won a Super Bowl, to be honest with you. So... Um, you know, uh, whereas like you take the Lakers and the Kobe thing, right? That they just keep showing every single day. Yeah. Um, my God, people like the Lakers around the world because it was Showtime and it's fun. It's a fun team, kind of like the Yankees, right? Yeah. No matter where you go, there'll be Yankees fans, Cowboys fans are the same way. Um, you're not going to have that. So therefore, I would go with the most clever name, football related, for the chili. And uh, who's the like? Is there a famous chief? Like that played or was like, no. no. Well, Mahomes. So Mahomes, Mahomes is the, the quarterback. He's the most famous on there. So you'd have to put a spin on Mahomes, obviously. Mm. Yeah. Okay. But you want chilies in there. Like what's what's in your chili per se? Um, Like anything that's, we- I mean. Do you, have, do you have different types of meats? Because we had the chili cook off on Drinking Bros. Yeah. So I have chuck and ground beef. Okay. Chuck and ground beef. Okay. And jalapeno. Um, top of ta- I don't know. All right, we'll, what come up should with I... we'll come up with something fun. Yeah, um, and then not the other team, huh? You think the, the 49ers? Chiefs? You think Chiefs? Oh yeah, never mind. <laughs> um, okay, so yeah, I'll do something with the Chiefs, or just something football. We can come up with some some football related for you, you know. So, what would be the equivalent of like Lombardi as far as like? So the Lombardi Trophy is, I know is the actual the trophy, trophy that right. you get for so, the Super Bowl, yeah. But, like, is there someone – because Lombardi was a coach, right? Yes. Is there someone else that's, like, 
famous on that level that everyone knows the name, like coach wise. That yes, I but, can, but not in this Super Bowl. Is the problem. I know, but yeah. either is Lombardi, right? That's the trophy. So like, could yeah, but it be he, that, just but that's the trophy you win for the Super Bowl. So we'll come up with something, Javes. I don't want you to stress your little mind out about it. No, we're coming up with it right now, and the people are going to be here for the entire process. Nope. And it'll probably be another half an hour of this. I don't this. want that So is there pops. something? <laughs> 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 so let's just, like, um, maybe I'll get a whiteboard, and we'll just kind of do a, you know what I mean? Like sure. a yeah, word, yeah, yeah. Um, a word cloud or whatever you call it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> We can go. I'll think of something. Yeah, or you can just call it hot and long. You know. Ooh, an old, an old hot and long. <laughs> the old toilet. Just call it the toilet buster. Serve it in a fucking child's toilet. Well, my <clears throat> the whole feeling behind it is like mom's. Ch- like I want it to be. I don't want. I'm not super fancy. It's not anything weird. I want it to be something that is like invokes memories. Okay. So that's my angle. And I learned that at our chili cook-off where it's like the ones that won are uh-huh. the ones that like reminded you of your moms, right? And yeah, it could yeah, really yeah. just be like a bunch of cans in a fucking bowl. And that's like, oh, and like people love it because it reminds them of childhood, right? Sure. So that's kind of another angle to go with it too. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'd put a spin on Mahomes, I think. Okay. Mahomes made chili, maybe. Mahomes ah. made chili. Mahomes made chili. Yeah. Mm. Think about it. Yeah, I will. Think about it. Yeah, I'll think about it. Because I know this is a big deal to you, James, and I don't want you to lose on a on a technicality just because you got a little sloppy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because you got a little wet and sloppy. Why don't I work on the chili and you can work on the branding? Deal. 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 Um, we'll do it, James. What's that? Grace. Any thought of having a tripwire on your chili on the crock pot? So when you open it, uh-huh. it does play Amazing Grace. Oh my gosh! <laughs> that oh. 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 Or walking in Memphis. Uh. Um, don't oh. know why, but cone that would heads. be for your chili. Yeah, the cone heads. If you want to put your um your hat in the ring, you know, go ahead. <laughs> but you're not gonna you're not gonna fuck my shit up. Oh, I like my homemade chili. I like it too. You know, I like it too. I mean, it needs to roll off the tongue, off the tongue, and sure. then there's girls there too that vote. They need to understand it. So, you know, even Lombard- Lombardi, I don't think anybody really got it, <laughs> but yeah, it yeah, was yeah. just like <laughs> stuck in their head, right? Was it the best chili? Let me ask you that. Uh, no, I don't think so. Oh, all right, and everyone agreed that like it clever was just branding. the clever br- branding, and it was just like good enough okay to match with the branding right so where when people chose it they didn't feel bad yeah, or yeah, great yeah, yeah, about yeah. it it was just kind of like yeah that one works okay we'll do that one all right yeah yeah it's a tough one because i don't know if the ladies will right will understand my home so exactly we'll see. so we need to like yeah we'll see um but this is your year i feel okay thanks yeah i feel yeah. good for you thank you i feel real strong about you thank you so Oof. Um, how you feeling? You all right? Sick. A little under the weather? Yeah. That Vegas flu got you, didn't it? The Vegas flu. Just everything. Just everything. <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> Maybe I should quit drinking. You should. Just for clarity. Just to like get back to myself. You should, Jesse. Oof. No matter how sick you were last night, you still made yourself a glass of wine. Watching you drink it was painful. I was like, oh, no. Have to. No. Have to. No. I didn't finish it. Obviously, no, like nowhere near it. as soon as I took the sip of it, uh huh. Um, as soon as I oh thanks, as soon as I took a sip of it is when I like got sick. Ah. Uh, so I was like, good, 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 and then I took a sip of the wine, and it was just like, oh, oh, don't do it. and it all. Don't it do all it, James. Back. Don't Thank do you. it. Um, let's talk about barstool sports here. Um, okay. this is this is a breaking news story. Uh, especially big in our industry, what we're doing right now. They just sold 36% of their company. I love Barstool. For $136 million to a gambling site. Do you know how site. long they've been doing it? No, I don't, actually. Mm. And that's why I brought this up. You're, so you're the podcast messiah, right? Yeah. I, for, for those of you at home who might not know why we did all of this, is 
you were one of the very first people that was listening to podcasts. Like it wasn't cool. I knew it was going to be a thing. Yeah, you did. Yeah. And I do remember the first people to kind of have a an umbrella of different shows under them. Uh-huh. And it was Barstool. Ah. And this was years ago. I remember we were in the Amber House. So we four even, or five years ago, four yeah. or five years ago. I'll say five years ago. OK. Um, And. I was like, oh, and they weren't that big. They would always chart because I think Barstool had a name, but there was two shows that had Barstool Sports, Barstool Sports, right? And that little logo. And I'm like, oh shit, like they're making a channel. And it was before like anyone had done it, right? Right. And I was like, oh shit. But they only had two shows on it at that time. Okay. And now they're like, you know, so... We, we, have, we have four right now. We have four. We just started. Mm-hmm. So it's very, I mean, it's inspiring only because they do a lot of the same stuff that we do. I and, know. Especially I mean, the gambling aspect. Yeah. And they kill it. I mean, yeah. obviously. And they're in New York and they're, you know, they, I don't know. It feels like, okay. Thinking back to when I first looked at that thing and was like, oh shit, that's what they're doing. Right. To us starting how many years later. But like. They grew from very little to what they are now. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, it's impressive, and there's similarities. And uh, I, I'm a fan of Barstool. Um, I mean, f- follow all their shits. And, yeah, uh, inspired, for sure. Anybody who says otherwise of like, you know, man, fuck them or whatever, it's like, no, man, there's enough room in, in this space for everyone, obviously. Um, but I, I, their guy, Dave Portnoy, mm-hmm. outspoken, brash. Yeah. Uh, a lot like myself. Ironically, uh-huh. went to Michigan. I went to Ohio State. Yeah. Interesting. Wouldn't this be great? It'd be fun. Um, so we'll see what happens with all of this. But uh, your show exploded. And you're doing, I want to announce this to the audience, you're now doing two a week. Two a week. Um, you'll have another show airing uh, Wednesday nights. So are you going Wednesday yeah, so night at 8? You'll have yeah. it like on the morning drive Tuesday. Uh-huh. And the morning drive Thursday. And then you'll also have it. So Tuesdays and Thursdays will be your we're uh, drinking broettes. Mm-hmm. Um, your you guys' show has become massive. Um, I realized yeah, I mean, it today on the way to. It. I was heading to the gym this morning, and I always try to glance at the charts uh, just to make sure we're doing all right, you know, ratings wise and all that mm-hmm. stuff. And uh, when you didn't have an episode out and you were still on the iTunes charts, I was like, whoa, it's cool. whoa. Uh, so it's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. We're we're getting there. We're on our fourth show now. Um, we got Ross Patterson Revolution, Drinking Broettes, uh, Drinking Bros Sports Companion Show, and then obviously Drinking Bros. Yeah. And, and we're looking we are, to add another one. Yeah. We're talking to a few people right now. I mm-hmm. uh, can't say who they are, um, but some of your favorites that we've interviewed over the years. And uh, yeah, we're slowly building. But w- seeing that news on the way in today, I was like, oh, shit. That's pretty fucking rad. It is rad. And when um, My Favorite Murder got bought for four million one show and then they started a media company from that so they didn't have they didn't have any other shows and they got bought for four million that was inspiring to me too so yeah. all of this means good things for us like it's not anything bad and you know they have some hits and some misses over there but they just keep keep grinding them out yeah. and consistent and they're there for you every oh yeah, yeah single yeah. day yeah. so that's just what we're trying to do have something for you Every, Every day. single day. Yeah. And we'll find our group of people as well, you know? Yeah, for sure. Um, for sure. This uh this Weinstein thing, obviously is, the trial is still going on, and I'm gonna get to yesterday's testimony in a second, which Oh, phew. let's do sponsors and then get into that. Uh because I want to get into that. Though. Yeah, we we can. Um I, but before we do that, I wanna say this. I got an email this morning from SAG, Screen Actors Guild, Uh um, obviously, which I'm a member of. I I got your card yesterday. Oh, congratulations. I can't believe that you're walking around without it. I know, (laughs) right? My SAG card, what would I do? How are you even getting into places? How do I live without you? Hey, we're in Tiny. All right, I'm going to read this from uh, Screen Actors Guild. Um, I can't believe this is a thing, and I'm really shocked to see it. Um, 
So it's, you know, hey, SAG after members, um, an important announcement about intimacy coordinator standards and protocols. Um, <sighs> Dear Ross, today we announced a new step our union is taking toward ensuring the safety and dignity of our members on set. Um, the standards and protocols for the use of intimacy coordinators is a landmark document that will help ensure members who are filming scenes with nudity or simulated sex are able to work in a manner that suits their creativity while maintaining their personal and professional dignity. Um, man, I, look, so my first what? thought with this is if you have to hire an intimacy coordinator now for movies... Mm-hmm. These budgets for independent movies just keep going up and up and up and up. You get harder to shoot because you, you start dealing with this shit. SAG comes down to you hard for all kinds of stupid shit all the time. Like, I've never been a fan of my own union. I think it's fucking bullshit. The only thing they're really good for, truthfully, is residuals. Other than that, it's like, man, you can't stop anybody from wanting to do their own stunts if they want to do their own stunts. Mm. You can ask for a stunt double or, or not a stunt double. With this, now you want a fucking intimacy coordinator? I guarantee you that job, because we have to hire like fire marshals and all this other bullshit. I don't do anything. They're like 88 year old men who are retired and they get like 1800 bucks a day. I bet you an intimacy coordinator is going to cost somewhere in that neighborhood as well. If you're an independent movie shooting like that, for what? What are you going to. What do you do? Oh, you grabbed her titty different? Or what's the fucking, you know? What are you going to say off, off camera? Whoa, 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 let's watch yeah. this. And what are we going to, you're going to simulate the sex before you get onto set or sim- simulate mm-hmm. how you're going to take off someone's clothes. And right. I, I, what's the, ju- what, what do you judge on something like this? What do you do? Oh, I'm sure it's just there for. Um, stupid. For them to talk to. It's yeah. fucking stupid. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and they'll overstep and they'll fuck with the directors and they'll make everything harder, just like every other little stupid job that SAG makes you have. So, right? But what's to stop somebody from saying, I feel uncomfortable? They tell the intimacy coordinator and then you could sue the production, I guess. No, I mean, that's what they're there for is so that you don't sue after. So I'm sure there's too many people coming out against and trying to sue SAG for stuff that's happened. So they're trying to cut it off at the pass, right? So if you have an inti- intimacy coordinator there they and they don't say anything to the coordinator, you don't have a case. Man. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. That's, all it, that's all it is. And these people will either just be there um, so that nobody gets sued or they'll actually like be a, a Susan and like mess with your production. God. This is the worst. Just like everything. That helicopter lady. Sorry. Yeah. But do you know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. she had to be there and she just like fucked with our shit. All day long. Because yeah. she was like it's Janet. Yeah. And that was her job. I know. And you're like, it's hard to be like, look, you're just here because SAG makes you. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, like yeah, yeah. SAG makes us. <laughs> you don't uh-huh. actually have any importance in this life. But, you know, a lot of people, that's their big thing. An intimacy coordinator. I mean, I have now seen it all. What's the point? What's the point of having nudity then? I guess. Yeah. I mean, I, I if you're looking at this right, and you're trying to have a sex scene or something like that, like right. I, if I was a producer, I would say, yes, yeah, write it out. It used to be a big deal, maybe four years ago, five years ago. If you were if you were had a rated R movie, you needed nudity in it to sell it overseas. Mm-hmm. Some form of even if it was just tits, right? Yeah, you needed it to sell overseas. Uh-huh. Now, since, you know, fucking China's making their own shit and everything else, like, independent movies aren't doing that anymore. If I'm making an independent film, I just don't put nudity in it. Yeah, I mean, well, but if there's any kind of intimacy, so... Or I don't use SAG. (laughs) Exactly. Well, why would anybody anyways anymore? Because if you use real actors, like, you know, fuck, if I'm in a movie, I'm supposed to be SAG. If not, and they find out, they're like, oh, you're out of the union. I mean, independent movies are the new fucking local play so you don't really need it's not ever going to do anything <laughs> well at this point yeah. so just use people that you want to use and but the thing is with the intimacy intimacy i'm sure is such a big blanket because they want you to have <coughs> to hire this person always right so yeah. even if you're kissing mm-hmm. 
You don't have to be naked and there doesn't have to be sex. I'm sure it's just if you're kissing or touching. Yeah. So it's like, well, fuck. Right? Yeah. You're going to have to have them all the time. Um, speaking of that, I got a... I'm part of a class action claim from uh, Linwood Jail about strip search. Oh, really? Yeah, I mean... Good for you. You know? I could get up to $200. Fuck off. If you were strip searched at Linwood. That's where you? Which I was. Look at that. Let's retire. <laughs> we want to go Boca. But I was you just go like to Boca? driving the kids to school. <laughs> oh. <laughs> she hasn't always been a mom, has she? <laughs> Little strip search what do claim. They do? What do they do in the strip search? What do you mean? What do they do? I want to hear it. I want to hear what they do to ladies. Well, the same thing that they'll do to you, but you have to. So you get buck naked? You get buck naked. You have to open up both all your holes and cough. So you have to spread your lips. All of them. And and cough. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that they can see if anything's in there. Oh, got it, got it, got Mm -hmm. it. Man, it'd be weird. Like, you would figure one of those holes is deep enough that, that, you know, a a simple cough isn't going to do it, right? Yeah, and I mean... Do they, they tell you to cough for, harder? Yeah, I mean, if they think, you know, they're all using their judgment. So I think in this class action, which didn't happen to me, but I guess there were uh, male uh, police officers that were strip searching in the garage. So they drive you into this garage. Uh-huh. And then, so it's like a two-sided garage. So the police cars drive you in, it closes on both sides, and then you go into booking from there. Right. So that... It's completely enclosed where the car is, right? Where they're dropping you off. Yeah. And I guess there was male officers that were doing female strip searches right there in the garage, according to this. Whoa. Look at that. But you know what happens then? If anyone's strip searched, they get some money. So you're welcome. hi That was a fun little thing to get. And I just thought it was pertinent to the... Intimacy coordinator wow. conversation. <laughs> we're we're there as a society now. We're there. Look, you can't even strip search a criminal I got my, anymore. How, did, how was it possible that I got my dick grabbed five times by TSA? Exactly. Six times. Six times by TSA. Full dick grab. Full hand on my penis. A full squeeze. I bet. Full I bet squeeze. you you'll someday, as I did, get a class action. Oh, thing from TSA. Thing yeah, from yeah. TSA and McCarran Airport. Yep. Yeah. And it will be if you were ever if you ever got your dick grabbed at McCarran Airport, you you could be entitled to two hundred dollars. Guy's name was Jesse. If you're in McCarran Airport in Las Vegas, uh, Jesse is his name. That video went berserkers. Fifty two thousand views of uh, of that. <laughs> well, you did. People do love to see those scenes from uh, Broke Broke Back, Back. To be honest, fuck them, fuck them, uh, Jesse. Jesse, let's do some sponsors, shall oh, we? <laughs> yeah. Both okay. Jesse's, in case he's watching along at home. Don't okay. think I forgot about you, you sexual deviant, you fuckboy. Um, first and foremost, talking about ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Uh, Ghostbed is the bed of Super Bowl champions. I don't know if you get a ghost bed when you win the Super Bowl, but you should. You should. Yeah. It's a great night's sleep. If you play well, a hard game, you need a good night's sleep. Well, you got one. Yeah, I did. I did get one. And I'm yeah. a little champion, too. And maybe if you win, you'll get like some sheets or something. Goddamn right you will. <laughs> Goddamn right you will. Flash25 is, this, is the uh, promo code right now for, there's a fucking 25% off sale. They still have not said whether or not I can say it, but I'm just going to keep doing it until of what? somebody takes it down. Um, whether or not I can say Flash 25. Well, yeah, what's the promo code that you told us? Flash Pro- 25, yeah. Oh, it's promo code Flash 25. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So I, maybe it works, maybe it doesn't still. If not, if you're military or first responder, you get 15% off everything in the store. That's, that's always there. And the 36-month page you go program, no interest, works with that. Um, but right now you can get half off an adjustable base as well, $200 off a Ghost Lux mattress. Um, sometimes they give away free pillows. Ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros is the fucking jam. And we talked about this on Broettes where they do a comparison of all the other mattresses 
to theirs. Really? Because they don't give a shit because they know theirs is the best. It is. So it's like, it's my favorite. I won't say the other brands, but you guys all know them. You've seen them. Yeah, yeah. But they do the comparison. They do price. They do differences. Like they will straight up just be like, here you go. Look at these other ones. We'll tell you. Yeah. I don't know. Every, every I just love ghost bed. So do I. Every night's the Super Bowl in our bedroom, isn't it? We have a ghost he, bed. He sh- I mean. We're, we're champions, Jesse. Okay. So. I need an intimacy coach for that fucking conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Get the intimacy Every coordinator in here. Well. <laughs> yeah. We need it on the set of podcasts, too, to make sure you're not getting... Uh, isn't that going to be the way? It's mental groups. That's the thing. Maybe we don't want to get that big because then we'll have groped. to have fucking HR and shit. I know. Ugh. How would that even work for us? It, you know, so he, interestingly enough, so going back to the bar stool thing, um, they have, you know, they got so big they had to hire an HR department. Of course. One of their things just says, hey, man, one of their contracts, because this got leaked. Some girl was just like, fuck Barstool, blah, oh, blah, blah. For sure. She applied for a job Oh, there. I remember this. Yeah, and we're just like, hey, man, if you're not fucking cool and you don't like curse language and all the other shit, like, get the fuck out of this here. This isn't a place for you. Oh, yeah. uh, I can't. It's great. It's not the place for you. It's great. Oh, I've always been a fan of Barstool. Uh, I'm, I'm psyched about that deal. Uh, next up, we got StrikeForceEnergy.com. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. Shabloinkers. Shabloinkers, James. I still have our neighbors fucking. Oh, yeah. You got to bring it to her. I know. Maybe I should just put it in my bag right now. Do it. But anyways, it's lemon. And why? Because she drinks White Claw, right? Yeah. And it goes perfectly with the black cherry. I'm drinking White Claw like an outlaw. Here I come, y'all. I keep telling her I'm going to bring it. So I'm just putting this in my bag right now. Sorry. I'm going to sleep with your grandpa. Excuse me. Um, so what? Sorry about that. Um, yeah, bring it, bring it with you. Let her know. Bring it, bring it. Sorry, Brooke. Uh, Jesse's a horrible friend, and she needs an intimacy coordinator on the set of this show. Um, no, but Strike Force Energy is uh, best in the biz, man. Long, lasts longer than five hour energy. No carbs, no sugars, uh, no bingo, no bango, uh, no Dodge Durango. Just straight liquid going into your juice or your white claws. It's a tasty, tiny little tin pouch. Boom, here it is. Rip it open, squeeze it in any liquid available. Strikeforceenergy.com. Just get a subscription of the month. 10-pack, 40-pack, and a 750-milliliter bottle. Your call. Your call, hombre. Do what you want. You're your own man. Don't call your fucking mom right now. Go to strikeforceenergy.com. Use promo code REVOLUTION for 20% off. They ship everywhere in the entire world. Last but not least, straightrazors.com. Ooh, that's a clean cut. Smooth. Oh, you like it? Ah. Oh, oh, felt that right here. Oh, I felt that right here. <laughs> oh, there it God. is. Yeah, I knew that was gonna do it Still to you, Jabes. Soup. You do it for the people, though. Mm. You just, are you sipping soup live on her? I would never not. I would never not do it for the people. I wouldn't be here. When my Linwood money comes in, <laughs> I'm still going to fucking be here, you guys. Okay. I like how you're just sipping soup on set. Look, what do you want me to do? Uh, nothing. Nothing. Okay. Games. Um. <laughs> Die? <laughs> Straightrazors.com is the best way to kill yourself if you do want to die. Well, oh, I shouldn't say that, James. Oh my God! Didn't you do it? You're a- getting real close to the edge over there. I think Jack did one like that, didn't he? He did. It's funny as shit. Jack Mandeville doesn't doesn't one doesn't of our work favorites. for him anymore. But hey, <laughs> he went for it, and we love it. He doesn't work. Stri- well, Street Razors is really they're an awesome company, right? Who the is best. it? Uh, Luke Webster. Yeah, no, they, he does work for them. It's another company he doesn't work for. Oh, got it. Sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're okay. cool. They're, they're cool, cool like that. It's Luke Webster. That guy's fucking awesome. Oh, they awesome, don't give dude. a fuck. No, they're great. Yeah. Um, Clearly not. Dudes. I've been doing... Yeah. You like it for forever. forever. Um, look, best shaving products in the biz, man. I use their fucking cologne and, and uh, their aftershave every day. It's smolder. Just get a bottle of that if you don't believe me. Um, the straight razor is a second to none. If you're worried about using one of those, you get a safety razor. And, uh, do they have shave gooch? Up. Do they have gooch glue? Um, they do. So if you sh- if you nick your gooch, you can glue it back together. That, or if you like want to go for a run or something, right? Yeah. And you want to just glue your underwear. Glue your balls up so yeah. that they kind of like stay. Uh-huh. Do you know like what I mean? So they're them. not like yeah, oh, it's glue. almost like a sports bra. Sure. For the balls. And then how do you get that off? Gooch glue. 
and then there's gooch glue remover. Ah, gotcha, gotcha, <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, you're gonna need both, kids. Go to straightrazors.com today. Get your gooch glue and your go- gooch glue remover. <laughs> and that's a mouthful. Uh, promo code Revolution for twenty percent <laughs> off. There. Did you imagine you just walk in? I'm getting ready to go to the gym, and you're like, "Whoa, what are you but applying it's like tucked, to your ball sack?" Tucked back. Would that be uncomfortable or more comfortable? If they were more just like secured. No, I want them. So, okay. I don't want them glued to my gooch because that's down. Okay. So you want them up, up and around Uh, just up on top of the, just up a little bit like a pouch, like a kangaroo pouch. So, but that would, would that still be under the penis? Well, the penis is going up. So the penis would be against my, my, uh, and then do you glue that My abdomen? uh, You know, is that where it goes? I usually on my top rib, you know? Jesse, you know better. Look, when you, you're, you, we live together. If you wanted to like have, <laughs> if you wanted to compact it, right? Again, so it's yeah. not like. Yeah, 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 exactly. So I wear different boxers <laughs> for the gym versus but that's different still, boxers in real life. But that's still not super secure. So if you were it's to. Pretty tight. Pretty tight. It's like a sports bra. Okay. That's me personally. Now out there, but they're all to, it's all together in one thing. Yeah. So that's why I was just like, if you just separated them. Problem's this: you start sweating, you know, you um, shrink up. Like you're not, you're never oh, rocking a full and, wang. Yeah. yeah, I mean, oh god. Um, you all right over there? Nope. Um, Everyone knows it's, that. It's it's one of those things where you're you're not rocking a full ocho if you're playing hoops. If you are, something else is fucking going on. You know? Oh, okay. Like maybe the after effects of uh, some Roman from getroman.com forward slash drinking bros. Oh, like a boner it. pill. That would be the only way you would see somebody rock in a full or a half yeah, chub no, playing no, sports. And I'm not talking about any of that. But well, No, but it's different. So for, for girls, like, you know, you have what, D's? No. Okay. C's, big C's? Yes, right? Yeah. But you've got a bra that keeps those in. They don't shrink. Those are there all the time, right? Whereas a, a man's genitalia, dick and balls, shrinks, mm-hmm. like shrivels up, um, especially if you're doing some form of running or athletic activity. Mm. It, it, you're just, your body instinctively knows. It's just like, all right, sweet. Oh, and it will keep it compact. Kind of, yeah. Balls as well? Yeah, balls as well. Huh. Sack shrivels up. And if you're out there and you're trying to shave your, your sack, I mean, this convo. Yeah, you need it to be ho- like hot. No, there was a male porn star who told me, um, hey man, if you're shack, sorry, sack shaven, uh, you got to put that in cold water, dip it in cold. That way your balls and your sack shrink up and then you can shave the area. It's a smaller area to shave, but you wouldn't want it to be wrinkly. You want it to be like, it's a hard surface. You don't want to, but you don't want to shave against wrinkles, Yeah, but it's a hard, it's a hard surface. Oh. So yeah, uh, that's like the knee flat. Like you no, can't he's correct. Shave. Okay. He's correct. In this, uh, James, I've I've done it. I do it. I shave up twice a year. I don't have a lot of hair. Twice a year, you know, I run a, a two through the pubes. Christmas and Chinese New Year. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the Lunar New Year. But right? those are like a month apart, Jesse. So. Yeah, I know. And then you just don't do it any other time. <laughs> I go. I go. I go Martin Twice Luther King Day month. and Valentine's and Day. Valentine's and Valentine's Day. Go, and that's go. it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I want to talk to you about Valentine's Day real quick. Uh, I talked to Dan about this yesterday. Okay. But whether or not people do it, we always do do it. Do you enjoy it or is it, does it feel forced to you? I've never asked. Now, look. I just take you out. What is my most favorite thing to do ever? Eat. Eat and drink. Yeah. So I'll never, you know, Say no to that. Poo poo it. Poo poo it. But I do not like the um, like Valentine's card or like a Valentine's like b- weird heart balloon or a bear with the heart. Right. Seems very meh. Okay. But I'll definitely like go out. I mean, there's no wrong time to have a date with your husband, right? You should. Yeah. You should do it. Yeah, yeah. But there is like, and I'm sure you guys talked about it, but there is like a a kind of gross element. To it, where you're just like, ugh, I'm just being forced to buy all this shit, right? Yeah. And then when you have kids, it kind of shifts to them. So like, I have to make all of his little 
Valentine's and sure. make a Valentine's box for him friends to put all the stuff in. And so it's not very romantic. It's more like juvenile to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? All right. Uh, I'm good. Because uh, I didn't know if you were in the camp of like, hey, I need a, you know, a candy eel or something like that, like a chocolate eel. No. Um, big, big on along the coastlines. Everybody's getting chocolate eels for their loved ones, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, just a big, flat chocolate eel. And it's sort of, is it ele- like, does it electrocute <laughs> you a little bit? Well, that, what happens is you plug it in and it melts. So. Oh, fun. So, yeah, no. Um, <laughs> Thank you. I'll, I'll take a seagull. That's another thing that people are doing. <laughs> the old chocolate seagull. The old chocolate seagull. Sounds like a sex position, doesn't it? Let's take the chocolate <laughs> seagull for this. Yeah. Yeah. Blah. Yep. Hoop. It's a hot dump in the mouth followed by a blowjob. Um, no one nope. was wondering what it was. <laughs> That's the cool thing about naming um, sex positions. You just make up a weird name and then you leave it there, right? And let the people, Guess. like the C-3PO. Ah, uh, the chocolate The seagull. old C-3PO. Oh, yeah, the C-3PO. People are like, what? We knew that, though, for years. And everyone knows it. And you just kind of leave it. Everyone still does it. Yeah. Um. <laughs> but you decided to <laughs> remove all doubt and just really put it out there. Ah, that's what I do. Yep. That's what I do. That's what I'm here for. Day in and day out. And what was it? Chocolate seagull. Mm-hmm. It's uh, taking a dump in somebody's mouth and then uh, making them blow you. So uh, that is the chocolate seagull. Try that with your loved one on <laughs> Valentine's Day. <laughs> That's go to the go to the so melting pot. Gross, dude. Go to the melting pot first, and then uh, load up on uh, some meats, and have a nice chocolate seagull with your loved one. Meats you get home. dipped in cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Dip your meat in some hot cheese. Cheese, and then uh, have a nice chocolate mm. seagull for dessert. <laughs> But we're about out of time. Are we no, going to get to nowhere, any real we're nowhere, stories? We're nowhere close to it, James. We're nowhere <laughs> close to it. We're, we're nowhere close to being out of time. I could go on <laughs> for years. Um, what did you want to say about the wine scene thing? I cut you off right before Spencer's Oh, no. I just, I, wanted to, I just wanted to get into it. So they started. Okay. Yeah. I just wanted to get into it. That's it, huh? You go. Oh, yeah. They fucking started, dude. Okay. So what's um, the deal with it? So Annabella Shore testified, which... She's the credible one or no? Yes. Okay. So I think, I now think she's, they've got a good shot at this. Okay. Um, but then the ones today, like, I mean, they're calling in everybody, obviously. And uh, today they brought in this chick who said, you know, Weinstein had, had teased film roles in exchange for, uh, for threesomes and things like that. It's mm-hmm. um, going to be real. That's been going on for a thousand years. If you said yes to it, that's your own fucking fault. Yeah. Um, you know, I, like Jesus Christ. I mean, I could tell you some fucking crazy stories from other celebrities. Very similar to this, where it's just like, ah, there was one in particular. I'm debating about whether I'm saying his name or not. Sexual Either way. Sexual assaulter teased, teased film roles in exchange for threesome. I mean, that's what this whole trial is about, though, Ross. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, but So... What is your issue with this particular person? She wasn't raped. She was a character witness saying, yeah, I, like he said, so you only we could have threesomes that, and things like that. You only want people that were raped to be on the stand. Well, it, it, once you start going down this road, here's the problem with this. You right? have to go down this road. Uh, but here's the problem okay. with it, is in Hollywood, you could put everyone on trial for this. And you can and you should. So this person is, he's more than just what it is, right? This trial is not about just him but the the what you're charged for is rape if you right. consent to a sexual act, and for some reason it's really hard to convict him for that even though it's widely known no because he absolutely did but, do it but here's so the you thing. need to bring other people in because in order for us to convict cosby how many fucking women need to come forward but they were raped 50 but they were raped that's the difference this today's woman wasn't raped mm-hmm. she was just promised a film role in, in exchange for a threesome. in exchange for a threesome yeah Again, that has been happening forever. And if you consent it to it, it's your own. At that point, it's your own fucking fault. We don't know if she did, right? Uh, in this one, yes. Um, 
and this was like prior bad acts witnesses is what it's called. Mm-hmm. So they're going to start calling people to the stand like this who said, mm-hmm. hey, man, he promised me this if I would blow him or whatever. And mm-hmm. it's just like, I'm sure you've dealt with that at fucking restaurants, let alone movies and other shit, you know? Yeah, but doesn't mean uh, it doesn't mean it was cool, right? So I, I think I'm not that saying like, it was cool in either case, but right. you, you could walk away if you didn't want to. Here's the thing. For, for this is an inspiring actress. I won't say her name. Mm-hmm. Um, you still have to consent at the end of the day. She could have walked out of there. Whereas Annabelle Shore just said, dude, I got raped. Mm-hmm. I fucking straight up got raped. There's a few other women who said I got raped. Right. And now, it's just, here's the thing though. It's just sad that that's not enough. Um, there's still people that are like, yeah, but yeah, yeah but he has emails of them. Well, you know, because of threats that he made to them, he has emails of them still talking to him. Well, um, the emails that so, they're referring to, by the way, say, I love you. And sure. I'm like one of them said, I love you. And this is a direct quote. I love you. But I don't want to feel like a booty call with like a winky face at the end of it. And you're like, that'll probably get tossed. Um, mm-hmm. I think the credible witnesses, though, will bury him now. For real. Rape is rape, and you're going to go to fucking prison. Well, for it. I think that we've learned, and they, there's many articles where it's like tracking like Cosby, and I think we've learned from the Cosby case yeah. that you can have 50 women saying that somebody did something, and if enough people like him, he will not get convicted. So I think that they're just bring they're they're trying to over overkill because they have to, right? right. Because apparently. Even one person, if there was one person saying that he raped them, it would not be enough. It wouldn't be enough for you. It wouldn't be enough for a lot of people. Sure. So, and this case is just about so much more. So, you know, if, Look, you, I think think, if you think this girl is like trying to get some kind of credibility or, or some kind of fame from it, then I guess I hear you. But as far as like being mad that they brought someone as a... I'm not mad. No, but... You sound a little bit like, hey, this fucking shit happens all the time. What's the problem? Look, there is instances where, fuck, man, it's happened to dudes, too, where it's just like. Sure it has, and it shouldn't have, yeah. and it shouldn't anymore, you right? You have the, the choice to get in or out of there, and like, if you're left with a choice, then that's what I have the issue with. Um, yeah, but it's you when you're. You could have just left. Right. It's the balance of power, though, that well, doesn't work in those instances where you're dealing with someone that you're literally he's she's literally talking to someone that hold can hold her whole life in his hand. And that's what he's doing. I can do this for you. And that imbalance of power is what this whole thing, the whole me Too, this whole trial is about. Right. Where it's like if you're just two people, if you're just two people on the same level. Yeah, you can fucking leave the room if you're just two. Why do that job if that's what it... My, my question is this, right? There's a million movie producers in town. You can, uh, there's a million Not auditions. Not at that time. Not at that time. Oh, I at, mean, at that time, there was even more. Weinstein was the guy. It doesn't matter. If there was, there was a, a number of other dudes at, at, at other studios like, great, just don't uh, fucking go for Weinstein movies. Do whatever you want. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you've, been, you've offered me sexual favors to go to the grocery store some nights. Yeah. Yeah. And you hold, you hold the power in our house. And that's My the difference. My dinner cannot get cooked. That's the difference. And I felt uncomfortable. And you know why I'm able to do that? Why? Because of Weinstein's trial. <laughs> it's changing everything. And yeah, you're right. But this idea that like, I'm, so, I, you're right, but I'm just not going to let you. Go down this road right now uh, for your own fucking good, my friend. I'm not going to let you, of, I, dude, do this. If you're taking a profession, this is a bad you, guy. You've got to have, and he needs to fucking go down. No, he will. But and he, we're going to bring up will. whatever the fuck we're going to bring up to take him down. Carry on. I'm saying you will. I'm just saying in in certain instances where you're just like, man, choose another profession or whatever the fuck it is you're doing. Like you know, there's a million people casting movies and all this other shit. Like that wasn't your end all be all. Um, but nah. I, I mean, I could go into some fucking crazy people who have had threesomes and otherwise and shit like that. We were just like, oh boy, fuck. Um, wow. Wow. But one of them, I was just like, hey, we shared the same acting coach and this girl told me the story about so-and-so, right? And, uh, I was just like, why'd you date him? Why'd you go over the house? 
well, you know, I thought he can help out with things and great. Sweet. When you got there, why, why didn't you just fucking leave? Well, I don't know. I just, you know, seemed kind of harmless or whatever. And I was just like, put yourself in a horrific situation. Like, it's just one of those towns LA is where it's like, you know, it's always been fucking filthy like that. It's not just that town though. And it's not just the acting profession. Um, interesting enough. I just listened to a five part, uh, podcast on just a, um, do you remember alternate media? Buzzfeed did a huge article on the, um, the owner the main guy of alternate yes. alternate media. I, I don't, I've, I can't remember the guy's name. Yeah. But anyway, so it's that's in journalism, right? Yeah. That was nothing to do with fame or a thing, whatever. Sure. These are like women that have educations and they're getting a chance in journalism. Right. And same thing. And it went on for years. And it was around the same time. So I think the point is there was just this time and it was across the board, any, um, any profession... Anything where there's a man like that in power that can hold, that can, you know, and, and even it's, it's, it was hard enough at that time for women to get into the workforce or get at a, at a level, right? Yeah. That they wanted to get to. And you needed at that time, you needed a man to give you a chance. They needed Harvey Weinstein to give him a chance. They needed, you know what I mean? Like they needed him the, this guy at alternate media, whatever, to give them a chance so that they could get into the career that they wanted to. Okay. That chance, oftentimes, and you're right, I have dealt with it pretty much with every job that I've had or any male boss that I've had. And that's just the way it was. And I think the point of this is that we just don't want that to be the way it is anymore. Right. And it's going to happen and there are going to be moments, but I think this... And Harvey Weinstein going down and this other guy going down and all these people kind of falling. Again, I don't like things like Unzi's and sorry or like people that don't have that balance of power. Sure. And they just had a bad date. They don't hold anybody's life in their hands. They just kind of were shitty. Right. Yeah. Not good at interacting with women. I think there's a huge difference between being not good with interacting with women and holding somebody's life in your hands and making them do jump through hoops and do sexual things to get a chance to make their life better. I think that's fucked up. Right. Sure. And so, yeah. Have I not gone into the hotel room? Sure. Did I miss that opportunity? Fine. But yeah, you do. And I wasn't as like desperate of an actress. Like I liked doing it right. and wanted to do independent stuff and wanted to do things, but I wouldn't ever, I wasn't like, desperate like that right yeah like wanted so bad to get into but a lot of them are right that's the one thing that they want to do you've walked away the from threesomes one James. thing i've walked away from threesomes yeah what do you mean when you called me one night in new york oh yeah but that wasn't again that wasn't a balance of power that was just some fuck fuckheads at a friend's house right oh i didn't know i didn't know what the the job was okay Oh, when I was working it. Oh, yeah, I was like a bartender at those people's houses. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. So, like, I already got paid by my boss that wasn't there. Right. Um, but, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's just the way it was. Did you join a threesome once? I've never been involved in a threesome. Good. In my life, yeah. Proud of you. Yeah. Proud of you, Jabes. But you have gone to prison. Yeah, and I've been strip, a lot. <laughs> strip searched at Linwood. So, look, I've lived a lot of lives. But I guess I think the thing is that we'll say about the Weinstein where we're going to, you know, critique it and talk about it. But, um, like, he's a horrible God. person who is going to jail. He was just a scary motherfucker. And the more, like, yeah. like I was saying, the more things, like, because they have more tape on him now that's coming out, like, where girls ha were wearing wires. Sure. And he's just, like, it brings back, for every woman that hears this, like, it brings back this feeling where you've been that, you've been in that situation, whether it's whatever job you've ever been in, where you're just like, oh, like, this is so cringy, but I don't want to make him mad. Like, he was a scary guy. And he would be on the brink of like getting pissed. Harvey Weinstein, right? right? And and just like pleading, but mad, but like on the verge of like, you don't know what the fuck he's gonna do, right? Like 
he is a scary motherfucker and he needs to be in jail i think he was just scary he he will i'm telling you I, you think like, he'll be in jail yes jail, jail due time yes i do i actually do uh before this I started I, look i said the if paz de la huerta was your fucking main witness you wouldn't get you're, you're fucked you're fucked um now that we find out who who the others are who yeah, the others are and then down. even this girl with the threesome i mean she's a credible normal girl you know no, like, i get it she's not wanting fame it's like she's just here to say hey yes yeah. If you need one more person to tell you he's a creep, I got gotcha. you yeah, over yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, look, I'm, there's going to be a litany of them, so get ready. Um, and there's going to be some that are going to be fucking, mm, please, right? Yeah. What are you doing this for? Right? Oh, yes. And then, yes. so. That, that was my point of like, hey. She doesn't seem like that person, but I guess you think otherwise. To me, she doesn't seem like she's trying to get any kind of fame from it, but. Uh. So you say. I don't know, man. Look, it's just a feeling that you got from her. Yeah. And, and again, like, you know, shit. I, I don't know. You can always walk away. You've walked away. Again, I've never been. I can't say I've never. Harvey Weinstein has never dangled a fucking Oscar in front of my face at a time when I'm like 20 something. Like, I don't know what I would have done. I really don't. Like, I honestly don't. Or if I thought I'd be the one person that, like, maybe I could just give him a massage and get out of there. Right? <laughs> maybe I could just, like, watch him shower and go. Yeah. Yeah. I have no idea. Eh, I don't know. I know I've negotiated less. Right? What do you mean? I know I've negotiated around situations that, just like that. To get the fuck out of there? To get the fuck out of there, but still keep your job intact and still not piss anybody off and still be able to see them the next day. You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. that kind of dance of, and you hear the girls doing it, the dance of like, I don't want to make you mad. Can we still work together if I don't do something with you? I'm not sure. Right. Do I just do a little something? Like, I don't know. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. it's a constant thing. And we've just had to deal with it our entire, hopefully adult life, not any younger than that. But yeah. You just, it's just a dance that you always have to do. You go out with a coworker or something and they, you know what I mean? You want to like get out of there without pissing anybody off. Can we still work together? Are you going to say something to somebody like, you know right, what I mean? Right, right, right. No. Jabes. What? No, I'd look, I, it's, it's all interesting to hear. You've me toot me. Yeah, I have. I did. It worked out. Worked out, Jabes. Worked out for the best because I knew it was best for you. But totally what kidding. if it <laughs> right? What if it didn't? I'm totally like, kidding. oh god, I need to like, you know. And I've been in that position too, pretty much on every film set, where it's like, oh, fuck, like, now what? what now do you we mean? have to finish this fucking movie, like, you know? Yeah, that's right. You've dated people in movies, other movies too. One other one, but then the other movie that I did, the person that wrote the movie and was working opposite me decided that he liked me uh, and he was in charge got it got it got it and best friends with the producer and so that was someone that that was a dance the entire movie for me mm. dance of like oh we need to work on lines at the house sure that was one where we had a sex scene we should have had an intimacy coordinator but we were working on lines at my house and he was like i think we should get naked together and just kind of like look at each other and just kind of like get it out of the way sure and get comfortable did you do it yeah <laughs> no way that's the that's a tale as old as time James. yeah it didn't do anything but like oh how gross yeah it's weird right it's weird and then like working on lines and then trying to kiss me and then like getting pissed and I had a boyfriend at the time. It was just like, you know, it's just like, fuck. Yeah. And especially in that world, right? The film world. Because it gets, things get very blurred. You're kissing them on scene, it, like on camera, but not out, you know? Yeah. It well, gets very good, good thing blurred. With me. I mean, good with me. I never give a fuck about rehearsal. So it's just like, yeah, sweet. Whatever, what are we doing? Great. Let's do that. I never did that. I never had to. Right. Because I was like, yeah, I'm going to give a fuck if I'm acting against a tennis ball. Let's do that. <laughs> I'd actually prefer it. Yeah. Um. <laughs> you would. I do. 
I do. All my scenes in range 15, it was just me and a tennis ball. Why? Uh, so we, we, that she was so crazy that we had to oh, have split. Oh, cause you were directing too. Yeah, so you directing. Had to like, so, and it was yeah. split units. So, uh, you know, you try to get it over as quick as possible and, and you utilize everybody's time the best. Mm-hmm. And so I was just like, yeah, uh, I've done a million movies. So I was like, just hold up a, f- a fist. And, uh, yes, yeah, so all those scenes, shit. All the scenes except for one. I was, yeah, it was just me and a fucking tennis ball. Um. Ta-da! I enjoy it. Uh, do you have a crime corner today? I don't. You don't. So you were just watching. You were watching something like a true crime thing before I walked in. Oh no, I was watching Jessica Simpson. Oh, you're obsessed with her now. No, I think she. I was trying to figure out if she was wasted. She seemed fucking wasted in her interview about not drinking anymore. She. She was. Oh, that was. Come on, she was on Valium. Valium. That was an easy one. Okay, so that's what I was like trying to figure out. Is like because it was like a. Um, an Affleck, Ben Affleck thing where yeah. you're just like, whoa, whoa, you don't sound right. Whoa, whoa, <laughs> it's whoa. It's like a, it's a garbled like thing, right? It's pills, man. It's pills. It's pills. I can tell. What? When, whenever so I Valium? See, yeah. So whenever I see somebody, by the way, I can tell you, like if they're talking and they've got slurred speech, I can tell you exactly what pill and or alcohol it is. And it's your superpower. It is. It's it, like if I was a, a okay, Marvel so character. Okay, so like when Ben Affleck was like on Ben Simmons, mm-hmm. was it just straight alcohol? Was it no. coke and alcohol? So that, that was coke and, and alcohol. Um, and what happens was with him, you could tell he'd been on a bender the night before. And so he's trying to like get back up and Early be morning like shoot. Yep. normal. Yeah. Early morning shoot. Had to chase that with some makers. Got and it. then probably did one line too many. Because mm. that's what happens when you do one line too many. Because towards the end of that bump interview. to get you back up. Towards cool. the end of that interview. Mm-hmm. He started to pull out of it. Got where you were it. like, oh got shit. It, got it, got Cause it. that drip kicks in in the back oh, of your throat. Okay. And uh, I just always assume people are on variations of pills. So like you say Coke. I would be like, mm, maybe Adderall. Like. No. It just seems like, do people do fucking coke anymore? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, I, I, I showed you that picture last night. Homegirl asking her to take a picture of her and her family. And then on the back of her phone oh, was a yes, baggie of coke. She was like early 20s. I'm talking like Ben Affleck. But rich, here's the difference. People so are when age. you when you are Ben Affleck and you are that rich, you can get the best cocaine the best. available. Okay. So you're not dealing with like stepped on shit where, mm. you know. Half of it's baby laxatives or whatever. Uh, therefore, you're like, all right, cool. One of these lines should power me through. Okay. I'm Ben Affleck, though, and I've done a lot of cocaine. So I know what I'll I'm do doing. I'll do three lines yeah, instead yeah, of yeah. one. I'm not an amateur. And then all of a sudden, boom, that kicks in, and there's nowhere for you to go with got your it, mouth. Got it, got it, got it, During situations it, got like it, got that. It, got it, got it, got uh, there's other people where I can tell if they're on uh, morphine. You Morphine's were, an old. You were at a lunch with me, and I was just like... You're like, yeah, what the fuck is that? And I was like, I can tell you, that's morphine right there. I was at a lunch with you with somebody? Yeah. And I was like, homegirls home girls on, on morphine. Do the entire thing. We're talking about it off air, but yeah. Uh, yeah. And I nailed that. I nailed it. I asked somebody later. I was just like, what was the story? Are that you I sure like, I was yeah. there with you? Positive. Because I don't go to, I don't get invited to lunches. Positive. You go to lunches by yourself. Uh, well, this one you were with me. Okay. And you were like, yo, what is the deal? And I was like, morphine. Uh, and I, that, got, oh. that got confirmed later. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. There's others where it's like pills, man. Like I had a fucking agent um, who was going down the oxy hole, right? Yeah. And the first few meetings at his office, I was just like, all right. He's just in a good mood and like this, this is fine. Ah, uh, yes. And then he got hooked. And uh, took, took, you know, started going four to five a day and had this conversation where he was like this at the office and, oh, Billy. And <laughs> oh, I, just, I finally what? just had to say, hey, man, because um, I was, I liked him and I was friends with him. And I said, hey, okay. man, your, uh, your slip is, is showing here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And he was like, and he was like, uh, your what? underwear is tucked into the back of your dress. He goes, what? And I go, well, your slip is showing, man. Like you're on fucking heavy drugs, and um, it's probably oxy's. And he was like, no, I, I've, I just had back surgery. And I was like, 
Well, there you go. And I go, no, you had back surgery a year ago. A year ago, um, yeah. So whatever, right? Blah, blah, blah. Cut to, I don't, I, I had to move on and hire another agent. Sure. I get a phone call a year later out of the blue. Um, it's typically when you leave an agent or a manager, it's this weird thing in LA. You, you never talk to them the rest of your life. Never. I haven't talked to one of them the rest of yeah, my life. Yeah, no, no, no. And, it, it's definitely done. And, uh, but nobody's, they're, they're, they're so passive and, and they're pussies mm-hmm. about it that they don't call or whatever you'll call and say, hey man, I'm here to do X or whatever and, or leave and they just won't answer. No. Um, you end up sending a terse email or whatever it is. Uh, but I get a call from him a year later and he goes, hey man, I really want to apologize. And, you know, uh, I was on drugs and I'm it's somebody told him to say it like a sponsor or something mm-hmm. like that. Like you to call and make amends mm-hmm. for like how um, fucked up he was. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, uh, and he was like, I'm, I'm also really sorry that I blew that movie for you. And I was like, what fucking movie? Excuse me. Yeah. I'd gotten two on the same, I'd gotten two parts on the same day in two different films. Right. Mm. And, and I was like, what other fucking movie? And he was like, there was a third one that week. And I was like, and it was with uh, Amy Poehler. Um, and it was in New Orleans and I was like, fuck you. And he goes, well, they just offered like a thousand a day or something like that. And I was like, I, I don't care, man. It was Amy Poehler. Like I would have done the fucking movie. I don't give a shit. Like, um, mm. but I always wondered about it. And so I was like, fuck. All right. Well, I'm glad, you know, you're on the way to a mess, yeah. but I'm going to now I'm pissed again. This is going to haunt my dreams forever. Right. Or whatever. So <laughs> weirder part about this story. I'm in a movie theater, an independent theater, Sunset Five, um, which only has five movies, and it is super indie in LA. Like no one's oh, there. Yeah. Middle of the afternoon, um, I'm the only one in there. I went to go see this thing that my buddy was in. Um, buy a ticket. I'm by myself, and uh, I run into the director of that movie, um, of the Amy Poehler movie mm-hmm. at the thing. He was like, "Ross, what's up, man?" I was like, "Hey," and I go, "I just want to say I'm sorry. Um, I." just found out a few months ago that my agent was on drugs and didn't accept the off and whatever. And right, he goes, oh, right. shit. I thought all this time that we had lowballed you and you were really pissed off at me and blah, 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 blah. And I was like, no, man, I would have done the fucking movie for free. For free. <laughs> whatever. And he goes, shit. And he, the only thing he said to me, he was a really funny guy and he's a great dude to this day. He just goes, fucking Hollywood, right? Am <laughs> I, go, I right? <laughs> great. I go, yeah, man. Oh. Uh, fucking Hollywood. Sorry about it. Um, so happy to not be. But it was like, uh, it, I think it was Amy Poehler, Rachel Dratch, like some of my favorites from SNL. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the writers had written it from SNL and I was just like, you motherfucker, man. Um, weird. I don't know how we got down this fucking rabbit hole, but here we are. Hollywood. Yeah. But any, any person you, I mean, I can tell you what they're on. Oh, okay. Yeah. Your superpower. That is my superpower. Okay. That's what makes me the best in the biz, Japes. All right. You know? Reading people, you know? Yeah, reading people. Reading people. Uh, let's get to the revolutionary figure O the day, shall we? We shall. Um, I debated about this one <laughs> because of my politics, obviously. But uh, And I thought to myself, no, fuck it. Um, I'm actually going to give this to Bernie Sanders. And I'll tell you what. Okay. It sounds odd. Mm. Um, he is heavily favored now, as of today, to win this caucus next week. And four other states have now put in their numbers, their initial numbers. And look, the media is all fucking left. So you know they're going to give genuine. You never really know. Well, no, but here's the thing. I think they will give genuine numbers for the Democratic nominees. They're just not going to do it for the the general election, whoever it's against. I don't don't see what the advantage of of saying that Bernie's going to win these four caucuses or whatever. But Mm -hmm. um, anyways, a friend of mine that he worked with in L.A., was a diehard Bernie supporter back in like 2016. And again, I don't give a fuck who you voted for in this life. It's what a democracy is and you can vote whoever you want. The fact is though that like, I didn't, you go back and think about this, right? Bernie got, it, my buddy was telling me, you know, again, he was like, they're gonna fuck Bernie over again on the democratic side. Mm-hmm. Somebody will come out and say, no, mm-hmm. you can't do this, and blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. And I was like, nah, they wouldn't do it twice, would they? And uh, he goes, well, imagine if they did. And I was like, oof, how do you go on? And then I thought to myself, well, how did you go on after the last one? Because they fucked him. Oh, Remember yeah. they gave all the questions to Hillary and all that shit um, for the debates yeah. and everything else. And I was like, man, 
the fact that he's even running again after a heart attack and all this other shit like you can't help but give that guy credit and i don't remember maybe nixon i guess nixon was the only one that kept running over and over again where you're just like jesus man you get the fucking hint but (laughs) according to these numbers he could win the goddamn thing on the democratic side like what is he 79 yeah um that would be crazy so I'm going to reward someone today for at least perseverance. And again, our voting or our political beliefs may not align, but uh, hopping back in there again and trying to fight for what you believe in is is at least admirable. And to see these numbers that came out today were shocking. And I was like, oh, shit. I mean, because there was a fucking article right after that that just said, um, and it was from Biden, who I don't know if it it doesn't seem like he's going to live very much longer. Biden? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, So Biden said, I'm going to need, this is exact words, by the way. I'm going to read this. Um, Biden says there's a good chance um, he would die in office, and he says he needs a really strong VP, and they must be ready to take over. Um, Why would you, why would you say that? (laughs) I don't know, but, and he goes on to say, no, I'm serious. Uh, So he goes, I can think of at least eight women and at least four to five people of color that I think are total, totally qualified to be vice president of the United States. But for me, it has to be demonstrated that whomever I pick, there's two things. One, he's capable of being president because I'm an old guy. Here's the thing. Probably shouldn't use the word he if you said that there's eight mm-hmm. women that you could have chosen. Uh, and then people were like, it shocked the audience. It. Yeah. Shocked the audience. And he goes, no, 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 I'm serious. Um, you know. He says he's in good shape and he works out every morning, but uh, a good shot he might die in office. And I was just like, man, you were saying all the wrong things. Yeah. And uh, it, it is, you're kind of left with Bernie, I think, at this point. So I'm, I think, I think and it could Rogan, be Bernie. A Rogan uh, endorsed. I was really surprised by that Rogan endorsement. Very surprised. I, Very. I didn't know what he was, to be honest with you. I didn't know what Joe Rogan was. Well, I knew he was like libertarian, but. That's, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if everything, I know he likes Bernie as a person because he talked to him, mm-hmm. but I'm not sure if everything aligns with what he wants. I, look, Rogan seems to be a hunting guy, gun guy. Like, Is Bernie cool with that? I don't think so, man. He's got the fucking, he wants to impose the stiffest gun laws there is, so. Uh, it's an odd so one to me. Yeah. Uh, the other, the, the other thing that I kept going back to was, is it because you have a great meeting with somebody and you just like them as a person? Yeah. Like that's the other thing too. She, he had Tulsi Gabbard on, mm-hmm. um, and it was good. I just don't think they really connected, and she didn't really open up. Um, but again, he hasn't had anybody else on, so because I didn't think he was a political guy. I thought he was interested. I thought he was an interested guy. I think he wanted, I thought he wanted to talk to anyone. Right. Anyone that he finds interesting. Um, So I think it was, I think it's just weird that he talked to one person and then endorsed them instead of having a couple different, maybe a conservative as well. Maybe, do you know what I mean? Like someone else, but literally only had Bernie and then. I well, the him. only other conservative you could have on is Trump because no one's running against him. So, and it's weird because I think Rogan would have him on. I wonder. He seems like that type of person, but maybe not. We'd have every, anybody on, by the way, because uh, I've gotten that question before of like, "Hey, man, would you say no to anyone?" No, yeah. I wouldn't, um, because an interesting conversation is an interesting conversation. You're not going to agree with everybody on everything, so. Uh, but at least you can try to find out why they're doing what it is they're doing and move on from there. But uh, I mean, it's interesting yeah. how anyone has gotten to the place that they are. So it is. It is. It is all fascinating to me. Um, Anyways. Yeah. I so, need to hear. I need to. I need you to refresh my memory of who that gal was. Which gal? At lunch. Oh, I'll tell you. Okay. It'll be super easy once you know. Oh, I know. Um, yeah, you'll be like, oh, fuck you. Yeah. Um, either way. I okay. uh, love you, Jabes. Love Fun you. show. Get better. Get well soon. Okay. Chili Coke Ops coming. We okay. need you in tip top shape. I know. I know. Ship shape. I know. Ship shape. Uh, <laughs> for Jesse Wiseman, aka the Jables. I'm Ross Patterson. This is the Revolution. Good night, everyone. Good night. <laughs>